Hello, I'm David Chen, a PhD student in the Department of Electrical Engineering at Stanford University. This video presents a summary of the main contributions in my thesis, which is entitled Memory Efficient Image Databases for Mobile Visual Search. I'd like to begin by showing several examples of mobile visual search systems that we have developed as part of our research. This first example here is for media cover recognition. The user points the phone's camera at various objects in the scene to recognize these objects. When an object is recognized, we augment the viewfinder with the object's title and user rating. We also draw and track the boundary of the recognized object. And in the case of a CD cover, we can also play a short sample of music chosen from the recognized CD album. An application like this can be very useful for sampling products before deciding whether or not you want to buy the product. This system actually uses a combination of image recognition to first recognize the objects and motion analysis to track the detected objects. The second example is for recognizing books on the shelf. In this case, when a book spine is recognized, we augment the viewfinder with the book's title and prices from a couple of online vendors. We also show the location of the book within the context of the surrounding bookshelf in a mini thumbnail of the bookshelf shown in the phone's lower left-hand corner. And the short text-to-speech reading of a summary for the book could be read aloud for the user's benefit. An application like this can be used in a library or bookstore to retrieve information about books without ever taking a book off the shelf. Our visual search techniques can also be applied to the problem of location recognition. Imagine you are in a large city like San Francisco, but are not familiar with the surroundings. If you turn on the phone's GPS, then you can roughly know where you are, but you are still not sure what building you're looking at exactly. However, by snapping a picture of this building with our system, we can tell you that it is the San Francisco Ferry Building. Our system can also retrieve useful details such as what businesses are housed inside this building, and maybe some interesting historical info about this landmark. For all three applications I have mentioned, there's a common need to search a large database of images. For media cover recognition, we need to compare the query image against all of the database images in order to recognize which database media cover best matches the query image. Similarly, for book spine recognition, we need to identify all of the database book spines that match the spines currently visible in the viewfinder frame. And for landmark recognition, we need to find the landmark database image that best matches the query image, even though these two images might be taken from different vantage points and taken at different times. So here we've identified the first major requirement of our database. We need to develop a database representation that can be searched very quickly across maybe one million images or more. Then we need to think about how to represent and store this large database in memory. If we store the database on a server, then we would like the database to be as compact as possible so that we can index many images and so that we can also run other memory-intensive processes concurrently on the same server. However, if the database is stored on the server, that means we have to upload query data from the mobile device in order to get recognition results out of the database. If the network latency is high, or if the server is very busy, then the overall query latency will be high. An attractive alternative scheme would be to store the database directly on the mobile device. But now we really have to contend with the small memory capacity of the phone, which is typically one to two orders of magnitude smaller than the memory capacity of the server. 
And this memory space has to be shared with all of the other apps that the user is likely to run concurrently. So here we've identified a second major requirement of our database. We need to develop a database representation that utilizes memory very efficiently. There's also a third challenge that we face for typical mobile visual search queries. Whenever we match an image from the database against an image taken by the mobile device showing the same object, there are large visual distortions separating these two images. These include large geometric and photometric variations and surrounding clutter. So a third requirement is we need to develop an image representation that is resilient against the significant visual distortions. My contributions in this thesis directly fulfill all three requirements simultaneously and can create a memory efficient, scalable, and robust database representation. First, I developed memory efficient histogram signatures. These signatures cover the popular vocabulary tree framework that is used in computer vision. They can reduce the database memory usage by four to five times without any loss in the matching accuracy. And they enable fast decoding in memory. Second, I will move one step further and develop memory-efficient residual signatures. These signatures can be generated with a very small codebook. They reduce the database memory usage further, now by 12 to 14 times. They enable compressed domain matching, so no decoding is required at all. And they also allow effective low bitrate interframe coding for video sequences. Finally, I will use the memory efficient signatures that I have developed to engineer low latency mobile visual search systems. These systems operate a fast on-device visual search engine thanks to the memory efficient signatures. They can automatically infer the user interest from the viewfinder motion, and they facilitate a low bitrate query expansion onto a server when network conditions are favorable. Here's an outline of the remainder of the presentation. First, I will discuss related work in visual search. Then I will describe image retrieval with feature histograms. Here, I've developed two methods called tree histogram coding and inverted index coding. After that, I will describe image retrieval with feature residuals where I've developed a very compact signature for searching a large database of images. I'll then use this compact signature to build efficient mobile visual search systems, where I'll talk about an on-device local database search, a motion-adaptive query selection mechanism, and a hybrid query mode. In a visual search system, there are usually three main processing blocks, local key point detection, local descriptor extraction, and global signature generation and search. For key point detection, researchers have proposed many methods. Some of the earliest key point detectors were the Morvik, the Harris, and the Susan key point detectors. Subsequently, researchers developed multi-scale extensions, such as MSCR, SIFT, and SURF. And more recently, there has been increased interest in building very fast detectors. Examples include the FAST, BRISC, and RIF detectors. Once key points are detected in an image, we need to describe the regions around the key points using robust feature descriptors. Here, well-known examples include SIFT, GLOW, SURF, CHOG, and RIF amongst the class of gradient-based descriptors. Binary feature descriptors have also been developed, which can be matched very quickly. Some examples of these include the CS, LBP, Brief, Orb, Card, and Freak descriptors. For fast database search, the local descriptors are usually aggregated into a global signature. Here, a large class of algorithms belongs to feature histograms. 
Methods have been proposed for both flat codebooks and hierarchical codebooks. Researchers have also de developed extensions for improving performance, such as multipath search, contextual dissimilarity measure, soft binning, hemi embedding, and fast geometric re-ranking. Another class of algorithms belongs to feature residuals. Some well-known global signatures in this area include the CFV, the VLAD, and the SCFV global signatures, as well as their variants. Since I will talk much more about global signature generation and search as part of my contributions, I will first give an overview of local key point detection and descriptor extraction. Starting with a color image, we first obtain its grayscale version. Then, we filter the grayscale image with a bandpass filter, like the difference of Gaussian filter used in the SIF algorithm. We obtain the first response image, shown on the right here. Then, we vary the width of the filter kernel to obtain response images at different scales. What we end up with is a response scale space, which is a 3D representation of the image in X, Y, and scale. In this scale space, we will detect extrema, which are shown as these yellow boxes of different sizes overlaid on top of the image. Because we detect extrema at different scales, we gain scale invariance. To gain rotation invariance, we orient each of these boxes along the direction of the local dominant gradient. From these oriented feature key points, we extract local image patches. We compute the image gradients for these local patches, and we further subdivide each patch into smaller spatial cells. For each spatial cell, we compute some statistics from the image gradients to form a portion of the feature descriptor. Then by iterating over all of the spatial cells and concatenating their contributions, we obtain the overall feature descriptors. Once we have the local image features, we can use them to match a query image taken by a mobile device against an image in the database. Here, I show an example of the feature matches between a database image and the query image. Because I've chosen the wrong database image, the number of feature matches is very small, and the matches are not geometrically consistent. We'll try another database image. Again, the number of matches is small, and there's no geometric consistency. This pattern continues until we reach the correct database image. Now the number of matches is much higher, and the correspondences are mostly geometrically consistent. This method works very well, but there's just one major drawback. It is very slow. If we were to run this method on a database of one million images, it could take several hours, which clearly is unacceptable for the low latency visual search applications we are targeting. The results of the last section now motivate me to talk about image retrieval with feature histograms where I will show how we can search a large database very quickly. I'll also show how we can compactly store a large database in memory using two different methods called tree histogram coding and inverted index coding. To begin, we will build a tree-structured vector quantizer, commonly called a vocabulary tree in computer vision. We'll take a set of images and we'll extract their local image features. These features are shown as 2D points here for illustration purposes. Actually, we should think of them as high-dimensional vectors. To partition this feature space, we will perform hierarchical k-means clustering. In the first step, we'll divide into k large clusters. Then we'll split each of the large clusters into k smaller clusters. What emerges is a tree structure where the tree nodes at the first level are the large cluster centroids, and their children are the subcluster centroids. Here we show an example with k equals 3 clusters per level and d equals 2 levels. 
but in practice we'll build trees with k equals 10 and d equals 4, 5, or 6, since these larger trees have much better retrieval performance. Once we have the tree, we can compare tree histograms to evaluate image similarity. For the query image, we will quantize all of its feature descriptors through the tree. Suppose the first feature follows a particular path and reaches that leaf node. We'll update the count in the corresponding bin then for the query tree histogram. Similarly, as another feature follows a different path and votes for a different bin, after all of the features have been quantized and cast their votes, we now take the complete query tree histogram and we compare it against a set of pre-computed database tree histograms. We compare the histograms in terms of their histogram intersection score and the database image with the highest intersection score is judged to be most similar to the query image. In order to perform this voting, we need to store all of the database tree histograms in memory, say for a database of 1 million images. We measure how much memory this takes. For a tree with 10,000 leaf nodes, the tree histograms consume around 5.66 gigabytes. If the tree had 100,000 leaf nodes, the memory would increase to 6.39 gigabytes. And for a million leaf nodes, the memory would be 6.59 gigabytes. So a large amount of memory is needed. And this memory does not include the memory needed for the vocabulary tree itself, which is a separate issue we'll discuss in a few slides. To substantially reduce this memory usage, we develop a method called tree histogram coding. Our method encodes only the histogram counts at the leaf level of the tree because the histogram counts at higher levels in the tree can be reconstructed from the leaf counts. Also, because most of the bins are empty at the leaf level, we perform an efficient run length encoding of these counts. This results in a set of runs and a corresponding set of counts. For the runs, we losslessly encode them into a compact bit stream. For the counts, we perform a Loymax quantization, and we losslessly encode the quantization indices. Here, one important issue is that the encoded bit streams have to be decoded during a query in order to reconstruct the decoded tree histograms for score computations. We've experimented with several different encoding methods, arithmetic coding, RBUC coding, and carryover coding. And we found in general there's a trade-off between the coding efficiency and the decoding latency. In particular, the RBUC and carryover codes use byte-aligned code words, so the number of memory accesses is greatly reduced, and the decoding is therefore much faster. So far, we talked about computing image similarity in terms of histogram intersection scores. Actually, there's a way to achieve the same result, but in a much faster manner, and this is done using an inverted index. We quantize the features of the query image through the vocabulary tree the same way, but now when we reach a leaf node, we follow these red inverted links and vote for the database images which have previously visited the same leaf node. This voting repeats for all of the other query features, and when we tally up the votes for the database images at the end, we find we actually get the same histogram intersection scores that we obtained before. To perform this kind of voting, we now need to store the entire inverted index in memory which entails storing for each leaf node a set of image identifiers indicating which database images have visited that leaf node, as well as a corresponding set of counts. And this must be done for all of the leaf nodes independently. As you can imagine, the inverted index also requires a large amount of memory. To substantially reduce this memory usage, 
we develop a method called inverted index coding. In the first step, we'll encode the image identifiers by one length encoding a sorted sequence of identifiers and then losslessly encoding these run lengths. In the second step, we encode the corresponding counts by performing a Loy-Max quantization and losslessly encoding the quantization indices. Although inverted index coding is similar in spirit to tree histogram coding, the quantities being encoded and their statistics are quite different. To test the effectiveness of our methods, we use the MPEG CDVS evaluation framework, where CDVS stands for Compact Descriptors for Visual Search. It's a standardization activity within MPEG for building low bitrate descriptors with high matching performance. Within this dataset, there are five categories of images, graphics, paintings, video frames, landmarks, and common objects. There are about 10,000 of these images, of which only a small selection is shown here. To test large-scale retrieval performance, these images are further embedded into a sea of 1 million distractor images. Here, I'm showing the retrieval accuracy on the MPEG CDVS dataset in terms of the mean precision at rank 1 and the mean average precision. Three different tree sizes are tested, a tree with 1 million leaf nodes, 100,000 leaf nodes, and 10,000 leaf nodes. We see that as the tree size increases, the performance generally improves. Also, within each tree configuration, we compare uncompressed and compressed tree histograms. The compressed tree histograms perform slightly better this is because the Loy max quantization of the counts actually makes the query and the database counts more similar. Here, I'm plotting the database memory usage in gigabytes for the same three tree codebook sizes. I'm also comparing three different database representations. First, we have the uncompressed database, which uses the largest amount of memory. With carryover coding, we can reduce this memory usage by 3.74 times. With RBUC coding, we can reduce by 4.1 times. And with arithmetic coding, we can reduce by 4.59 times. We also measure the information theoretic lower bound, which is the entropy. Here, we can achieve a 4.9 times reduction. We see that our three practical coding methods are not far from the lower bound and from each other. Here I showed the decoding latency per query in seconds for tree histogram coding and inverted index coding. The timing is measured on 2.4 gigahertz Intel Xeon processor. We see that inverted index coding requires much smaller delays than tree histogram coding. This is because tree histogram coding requires decoding the tree histogram for every database image, while inverted index coding requires decoding only the inverted lists for nodes visited by the query image. For inverted index coding, the smallest delays are obtained by the largest vocabulary tree, which is the one that has 1 million leaf nodes. This large tree we saw before had the best retrieval performance. So this gives two good reasons in practice why people prefer to use a large tree. I also like to point out here that carryover and RBUC coding require much smaller decoding delays than arithmetic coding. This is because they use byte line code words that reduce the number of memory accesses. So in a low latency visual search system, we will probably want to use a carryover or RBUC code instead of arithmetic coding. Finally, in this section, I like to consider the practical issue of storing a large database on a mobile device. Here, I'm plotting a histogram 
of the RAM limits for 851 mobile devices on the market. If we try to store a vocabulary tree with 1 million leaf nodes on each of these devices, this will require around 70 megabytes. Then additionally, a compressed inverted index will require around 140 megabytes for a database of 100,000 images. The sum of these two will be 210 megabytes. The good news is about 70% of the devices on the market can already support this scheme. And this situation will only improve over time as devices gain more memory capacity. But the interesting question is, can we do much better than this? As a preview of the results of the next section, I'll show we can reduce the visual codebook size to just 190 code words, requiring around 0.1 megabytes. And we can replace the compressed inverted index by compressed residuals for the same 100,000 images. This requires around 49 megabytes. The sum of the two is around 49 megabytes. Now we can store the database on 100% of the devices on the market. And it's much easier to deploy the smaller database on each of these devices. How we can achieve far greater memory savings than feature histogram is now the focus of the current section on image retrieval with feature residuals. In this section, I'll introduce a compact residual-based signature that has a variety of uses, including building a memory-efficient database and sending low bitrate queries over a wireless network. To generate feature residuals, we'll return to the same vector quantization framework that we use for the vocabulary tree, but now we will use a much smaller codebook. We'll quantize the image's feature descriptors to the nearest code words in this codebook. Then we'll compute the quantization errors or residuals. We'll aggregate these residuals into a mean residual for each code word. Then we can repeat this process for a database image. Quantization of feature descriptors, formation of feature residuals, and aggregation into the mean residual. The process can also be repeated for a non-matching database image. Now to evaluate image similarity, we can just compare the aggregated feature residuals and see which database images have the most similar residuals compared to the query image. Since my work has studied both feature histograms and feature residuals, I like to point out the most important difference between the two approaches. Earlier, we saw that for feature histograms, the retrieval accuracy increases as the codebook size increases. The same thing is true for feature residuals, except we can reach the same retrieval accuracy at a much smaller codebook size. This is because in addition to encoding which Veronoi cells are visited by the feature descriptors, we also encode where the feature descriptors land in these cells. This important difference has significant implications if we consider a third dimension, which is the memory usage of the database. With feature residuals, we can reach the same retrieval accuracy at a much smaller memory footprint, which enables substantial memory savings compared to the feature histogram-based approach. Using feature residuals, I developed a very compact signature called the Residual Enhanced Visual Vector, or RED for short. Here, I'll illustrate the steps for generating and comparing a RED signature. Starting with a query image, we'll extract local features. We'll regularize the feature descriptors with a power law to reduce the effect of peaky components. Then we'll reduce the dimensionality by principal component analysis. The feature descriptors are quantized to a small codebook. The residuals that result are normalized on a per cell basis. At this point, we'll perform a cell-specific linear discriminant analysis to rotate the residuals into a more discriminative subspace. 
will binarize the LDA coefficients to produce binary signatures, which are very compact to store in memory. These binary signatures can also be compared directly in the compressed domain against a database of rev signatures via weighted correlations. Finally, we normalize the correlation scores to take into account that some images visit more cold words than other images. The output is a rank list of database candidates, where the most similar database images appear at the top of this list. Now, two of the most important parameters to optimize for the rev are the number of code words and the number of features. Here I'm plotting the mean precision at rank 1 versus the bitrate in bytes per image for a CDVS database. I first show a curve for 70 code words where this curve is traced out by varying the number of features. Of course, as the number of features increases, we expect the bit rate also increases. I then repeat this process for a codebook of 130 code words, 190, 250, and 310 code words, and we observe two important trends. First, for each codebook, there's an optimal number of features to choose that gives us an optimal precision. Second, as we go to larger codebook sizes, the gaps between the optimal precisions shrinks, which means there are diminishing gains as we increase the codebook size. We'll be able to better explain both of these trends while I talk about the mathematical analysis of rev signatures in a few slides. For each codebook, we'll perform a self-specific linear discriminant analysis. This requires first obtaining a set of matching images and a set of non-matching images from an independent training set. We'll extract some features from these training images and we'll quantize them to the codebook. To perform the self-specific projection, our first stop might be we'll project along the direction of the maximum variance within the cell, which is given by principal component analysis. However, if we choose this direction, this can lead to the matching and non-matching samples being indistinguishable after projection. Instead, a better choice is to perform a linear discriminant analysis within each cell, which optimally separates the two populations. If we pick this direction, then the two classes are much better separated after the projection. Notice that we can also choose a different LDA direction within each cell to take advantage of the local neighborhood statistics. After obtaining the LDA coefficients for each code word, we'll binarize these LDA coefficients. This results in a binary signature, which is very compact to store in memory. The binary signatures can also be compared directly in the compressed domain using XOR and pop count instructions, resulting in a set of Hamming distances. The Hamming distances can be equivalently converted into correlation values. The correlation values can be weighted. And finally, the weighted correlation values can be added together to form the overall image similarity measure. The weights for the correlation values can take advantage of the differences in the Hamming distance for matching and non-matching images. Here I'm plotting the probability of observing a Hamming distance age at a single code word for matching images in the blue distribution and for non-matching images in the red distribution. These statistics can be obtained from the same training images that we used earlier for LDA. As you can see, there's a difference between the two distributions. In particular, the smaller Hamming distances are more likely to be, to be observed for matching image pairs. Thus, we propose a weighting scheme that favors observations which achieve these lower Hamming distances because these observations provide stronger cues for the presence of a matching image pair. 
To speed up the correlation computation even more, we can use a multi-round scoring approach. The idea is shown here. In the first round of scoring, we'll compute the correlations for a subset of the code words. This results in a set of partial correlation scores. From this set, we identified the most promising database candidates for further exploration. Then in the second round of scoring, we finished computing the correlations only for these most promising candidates. At the end, we obtained the full correlation scores for a subset of these most similar database images. By carefully controlling the number of code words visited in the first round and the number of images visited in the second round, we can get a several fold speed up in the computation without any loss in the matching accuracy. As I promised a few minutes ago, I'll explain some of the trends we saw earlier with a mathematical analysis of the rev signatures. I've developed mathematical models for the rev correlation scores. For the non-matching images, I find the distances between the binary signatures can be modeled well with a mixture of binomial distributions. For the matching images, I find the distances can be modeled well with a mixture of generalized binomial distributions, which take into account the strong dependence between the bits for the matching image pairs. Here I'm plotting the distributions of the matching and non-matching scores for both the empirical and the model data. I'll do it first for a code book of 70 code words and 100 features. And then we can incre increment the number of features in by increments of 50. As you can see, the distributions get flatter and flatter as the number of features increases. At some intermediate point here, the overlap between the matching and non-matching distributions is at a minimum. And at that point exactly, we obtain the optimal position for this codebook. We can also change the number of code words in this experiment. Here we observe that as the codebook size increases, the distributions change less and less, which explains why there are diminishing gains as we go to larger codebook sizes. Now we can draw random variable C sub n m from the non-matching distributions representing non-matching images in the database. Similarly, we can draw random variable C sub m from the matching distribution representing matching images in the database. Usually there are far fewer matching images than non-matching images. Now for the retrieval result to be correct in the first spot, what we need is the max of the matching scores to be greater than the max of the non-matching scores. And the probability of this event occurring is exactly equal to the mean position at rank 1. Using this mathematical model, we can now predict the rev retrieval precision. Here we plot the model precision values next to the empirical precision measurements we obtained earlier. We see that our model accurately captures the two important trends. It predicts there's an optimal precision for each codebook that's obtained by optimal number of features. Our model also shows there are diminishing gains as we go to larger codebook sizes. A model like this can be very useful for optimizing the rev parameters and also for predicting the rev retrieval performance for configurations we have not yet tested yet. Now I'll show a comparison of the retrieval performance for several compressed database methods. For feature histograms, we'll compare against tree histogram coding and inverted index coding. For both of these methods, we'll use a vocabulary tree with 1 million leaf nodes, soft binning, multipath search, and TFIDF weighting. Basically, this is the best vocabulary tree we know how to construct. For feature residuals, I'll compare against the scalable compressed Fisher vector, which is a high-performing global signature that's been adopted into the MPEG-CDVS test model. 
and I'll compare against our residual enhanced visual vector. Here I'm showing the retrieval accuracy on the MPEG CDVS dataset for the four compressed database methods. For all five categories of images in this dataset, the tree histogram methods and REV perform very similarly. Also, across the same five categories, REV consistently outperforms the other residual-based global signature, which is the SCFV signature. Here we measure the RAM usage for the same four compressed databases. First, for the two tree histogram methods, they require storing a vocabulary tree that consumes around 70 megabytes. With tree histogram coding, we need an additional 116 megabytes to store the compressed tree histograms. If instead we used inverted index coding, we need 140 megabytes to store the compressed inverted index. Both residual-based methods use significantly mess less memory, around just 49 megabytes. This is around a factor of 4 reduction compared to the tree histogram methods. This enables the residual-based methods to be much more easily deployed on any mobile device. Having developed memory-efficient database representations, I will now use these compact databases to build practical mobile visual search systems. In this section, I will show a mobile visual search system that uses on-device local database search, a motion adaptive query selection mechanism, and a hybrid query mode. I'll propose an on-device image matching architecture that has the following advantages. First, this architecture is unaffected by slow network transmissions. Second, the system works in regions where you do not even have network coverage. The system is also unaffected by congestion on a busy server. It completely protects the privacy of the user's photos since nothing is transmitted over the network. And last but not least, versatile hybrid query modes can also be possible with this architecture as I'll show later in this section. But to realize these advantages, we must overcome the following challenges. First, the entire image matching pipeline must run on a mobile processor. Second, the device resources must be shared with the phone's operating system and other apps that the user is running concurrently. And perhaps the biggest challenge of all, a large database must be stored and the small memory capacity of the device. Our on-device image matching system has three major processing blocks, motion adaptive query selection, database search with REV, and viewfinder augmentation. In the motion analysis stage, we estimate the motion between viewfinder frames in order to detect periods of low motion during periods of low motion, the user is likely to be interested in what they're seeing in the viewfinder, so we initiate a new query at the start of every low motion interval. Then, as part of the query, we extract local image features, we extract a global rev signature, we compare the database rev signature stored on the mobile device, and finally, we verify the geometry in a short list of top database candidates. Once we have the recognition results, we can track the recognized objects using the same motion analysis engine that we used before. And we augment the viewfinder with new layers of interesting information. Our motion adaptive query selection mechanism defines every viewfinder sequence into low and high motion states. If we're in a low motion state, we stay there as long as the number of track features remains above a low threshold. Otherwise, we go to a high motion state. Similarly, if we're in a high motion state, we stay there as long as the number of track features is below a high threshold. Otherwise, we go to a low motion state. This can be seen in a concrete example. In the middle, we plot the number of track features over time for a particular viewfinder sequence. 
In the bottom, we show the corresponding motion classification and when new queries are triggered. As long as the number of track features is moderately high, we stay in a low motion state. But when this number of track features dips suddenly, we temporarily enter a high motion state. This classification corresponds very intuitively to the low and high motion movements of the phone and to periods of user engagement. There's an added bonus to the motion adaptive query selection, which is that we get very high quality query frames. During a low motion interval, the details in the query frame are very clear and crisp, and this frame is likely to yield accurate retrieval results. Conversely, during a high motion interval, the frame is degraded by motion blur, and this type of frame is likely to yield poor retrieval results, so we should avoid using this type of frame. We have implemented our on-device image matching system on a Samsung Galaxy S3 smartphone. This phone has a 1.4 GHz processor and 1 GB of RAM. On this phone, we store a database of 100,000 images. To measure the query latency, we perform 400 different queries. Here we plot the histogram of the query latency. On average, each query takes around 0.7 seconds, and even the slowest queries we measured took less than one second, so our system works quite fast. We give a breakdown of how much time is spent on three stages of image matching. Feature extraction takes around 32% of the time, Database search with Rev takes around 54% of the time. This is because we're searching a database of 100,000 images on the phone. And finally, geometric verification takes the remaining 14% of the time. Here we show a demo video of our on-device image matching system. When the user points the phone's camera at the product, we can recognize the object in under a second. We augment the viewfinder with the object's title and boundary, and we also track the object with the motion analysis engine for as long as the user maintains focus. And since we use on-device image matching, we can achieve these low query latencies anywhere at any time, independent of external network conditions. We've also extended this system to have a hybrid query mode most of the time, the local database search is sufficient. We find what we need on the phone, and we terminate the query locally. Occasionally, however, we want to expand the query onto a remote server when network conditions are favorable. At this time, we can send the same compact rev signatures over the network to match against a rev database stored on the server. This generates a rank list of database candidates we send back to the phone the labels and the local features for the top-ranked database candidates in the downlink, which has two benefits. It can improve the accuracy of the current query, and it can be used to update the local rev database so that future queries are more accurate. Our hyper query mode is well suited to typical wireless networks where the downlink speed is much higher than the uplink speed. Now, an interesting problem in this context is we're processing a sequence of viewfinder frames. If we extract rev signatures from these frames, we expect the rev signatures to be correlated. The interesting research question is how can we exploit the temporal correlation between the rev signatures to reduce the bit rate? We propose the following interframe coding approach. For the first frame, we'll send its rev signature by itself it's already very compact. But for the second frame, we will use the previously transmitted rev signature as a reference to predictively encode the second rev signature. This predictive coding continues for the next several frames until a later time when we send the rev signature by itself again to refresh the contents. What we generate is a low bit rate, continuous stream of rev signatures that we can send to the server. On the server, 
we decode the ref signatures and we'll compare the transmitted ref signatures against the database signature stored there so that we can send back the recognition results and the features for the top-ranked database candidates back to the mobile device. To test the effectiveness of our interframe coding method, we use the Stanford Streaming MAR dataset where MAR stands for Mobile Augmented Reality, exactly the type of application we're interested in. This dataset contains 32 query videos recorded with a camera phone. It also contains a database of 23 objects plus 1 million distracted images. And the challenges include viewpoint differences, illumination variations, and difficult background clutter. Here I'm plotting the mean precision at rank 1 versus the uplink bitrate in kilobits per second for this dataset. I first showed the performance for a baseline scheme that sends the rev signatures independently for every frame without exploiting the temporal correlation. Actually, this scheme doesn't perform too badly. It requires a bitrate around 100 kilobits per second, which is the bitrate you need to stream music over the internet. This is because ref signatures are already very compact by themselves. However, by exploiting the temporal correlation using interframe coding, we can reduce the uplink bitrate by almost two orders of magnitude to two kilobits per second or less. Now we can perform a query expansion for mobile augmented reality even when the network uplink speed is very limited. In conclusion, my thesis has studied how to build memory-efficient image databases to empower low-latency, robust mobile visual search systems. First, I study how to create memory-efficient feature histograms. I developed two methods called tree histogram coding and the inverted index coding, which can reduce the database memory usage by four to five times. If we use byte-aligned coding methods, we can reduce the decoding latency to 20 milliseconds or less for a database of 1 million images. And I've shown we can store a compressed histogram-based database on a relatively large set of images in RAM for the majority of mobile devices today. Then I went a step further and developed memory-efficient residual signatures. These signatures form a compact signature called a residual enhanced visual vector, which can reduce the database memory usage by 12 to 14 times. The ref signature exists in a binary form, so it can be stored compactly in memory and can be compared directly in the compressed domain. And I've shown a rev database can be easily deployed on all mobile devices today. In the third part of my research, I applied these memory-efficient signatures that I developed in building practical, low-latency mobile visual search systems. In particular, the REV signatures are utilized to build a robust on-device image matching system. A database of 100,000 images can be searched on the device in one second or less, regardless of external network conditions. And this database can be opportunistically updated when low bitrate query expansion is performed. These systems are automatically inferring the user interest from a motion analysis of the viewfinder frames. So the user never has to press a button. And overall, a seamless mobile augmented reality experience is created.